Making a $3,000 mural for only 300 bucks is no small feat. No! You'll remember in the last episode of this series, we showed you the inspiration. You met Yovana. You saw the planning process going down about how we're going to make this mural. We were cutting wood. Adi was sanding wood. She was routing the whole thing. And this is where we kind of landed. I teased you about whether or not her holes were going to fit perfectly. And here you go. Amazing. Okay, you can see that I actually nailed it in terms of the holes. These will come out and they'll be on top. Amazing. Finally, the foam has arrived. It is some insulation foam or upholstery foam. It's half an inch thick, and I've never worked with anything like this before. But I'm gonna try and lay this out flat on the table, one layer, and then I'm gonna take that wood piece that actually is underneath there. I'm gonna put the, put the wood piece on top, and then I'm gonna cut the shape out of it and what I want to do is actually not have it go over the edge. I want the edge to be the wood and I want it to just be soft on the front and just see kind of how that looks like. So maybe I will um, glue it on top and then around the edges of the arch, make a little bit of a slant. I think I, ha I have some fabric and I'm just going to test a little piece on the edge just to see what that edge looks like with, I cut a little bit here. I just like made a little bit of a rounded edge, but it's very like choppy because I'm not using an upholstery knife. And then I'm gonna go from there and decide what it is that I wanna do to see if it is a big difference from having this hard edge versus having that rounded edge. And then it might be worth buying an upholstery knife. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, so I'm just going to get a small piece of fabric and test out the different areas. I can definitely see here that it's like straight. I can definitely see that. But here you see it's like really choppy, but I have this like edge in there. I'm going to see if you can notice the choppiness. Oh yeah, you can't really notice it. You definitely can't notice it in person. Okay, I'm glad we tested it. Measure twice, cut once. So I think the move actually is gonna be to glue it down so that it has more like it's sticking when I um, try and cut it and then it's not gonna be like pulling away from me and then cut. So I'm gonna try this one first before I go any further and then I can actually just cut, get into a rhythm of cutting all of them and then get into a rhythm of gluing all of them and then put them off to the side and then cut. So we're gonna do one first. I'm gonna do the glue process. Okay, so for this glue process, I've got this spray glue and it says if you want it to be a permanent lock for you to spray it, let it dry a little bit till it gets a little bit tacky and then you place it on top. So this is the bottom and this is the top of this piece. I'm gonna spray the both sides and I want it to be a permanent stick. So shake this really well. Not gonna get really close to it. Ooh, it's kind of like stringy. let that dry and get tacky. Really just tackling one piece of the project at a time and then problem solving as I go. Like I already know that cutting the holes for where the sockets go and then 
putting the fabric inside there is gonna be like a little bit of a mind game for me, but I'm going one step at a time, checking, double checking that it works, and then moving forward. Ooh, definitely tacky. Do it in this corner. Don't wanna have to move it around a whole lot. Okay, I'm not totally sure. I think it's still movable. I think I want it a little higher. One more, one more, one more time. I didn't realize that this was a little long. Okay, I've got it. No, I glued my first foam on. One hack too is there was a seven on the front of this board and I transferred that to the back here because that's how I know which pieces go where. And I don't wanna have to be fumbling with it when I'm doing the install. I figured out a new strategy. So before it was like making it like all crumply if I want to make a straight line, I can make like a, I can poke a hole and I can pull instead of doing the like shimmy shimmy I was doing before. And it makes a way straighter cut. And that is so much better. And I can do that at the angle too. I just poke the tip in and then pull and that makes a way straighter edge. So I have this straight, nice cut versus what I had before, which was like this like choppy, like so it's just gonna make everything like much, much cleaner. installed you got all the pieces all the edges done and it's gonna be great next step is to put the fabric on top here we go it's a really exciting phase of this project where we take the upholstered arches and I have our fabric here in this long roll I'm gonna cut the strips just slightly bigger than this roll that we have, this arch that we have, and I'm gonna start upholstering. I uh, just pull it over, staple, 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 staple all the way across the back. Um, I'm hoping it's gonna be as simple as that um, because it's not perfectly smooth. So I'm gonna pull it over the edge a little. I'm gonna pull it over the edge of the table so that I can upholster it and then I can actually see what it's looking like on the bottom because I do believe I've got to get it pretty tight in order to get rid of a lot of the choppiness in the foam. <laughs> Having this gun is actually a game changer and I know that I don't have to be as tight on the bottom because I'm going to be pulling from the front. Wait up. Cut this bad boy right here. I really want to go from here to have that in. And of course, the first two sides 
are less um, important to be tight because I'm going to tighten from the other end, but I still want it to be relatively tight. It's a cute little corner. like this gives you a good idea and then I can probably just hyperlapse the rest of that. first upholstered arch. You can see there's like some ripples from the uneven foam. And if I pull in between, it makes it a little bit smoother. So I think I'm gonna go one by one in between. So if I had made it 100% smooth, I wouldn't have to make this crazy tight. But because I didn't, Right now, I'm gonna to have to go to the in-between of each staple, pull and staple it, and then go from there. Um, just because it's having some rippling. And then now I know, as I go through the other pieces, I'm just gonna to have to really work at making it tighter and tighter and tighter. But otherwise, it's, it's beautiful. It's definitely the look that we were going for. corner, upper corner, and upper corner. It doesn't have to be perfect because the outlet will cover it. Yep. And this, I don't want to pull it too hard because it'll make weird marks, but that should be fine. I can always redo that one if um, the outlet doesn't cover it. Okay, so we've got that one and two. And so it should be fine. We should just have the outlet on top. We're gonna create some French pleats on the back. Uh, so that we can install a piece of wood on the wall into the studs and then we're going to clip each of these arches onto a cleat and that will be the next step after the fabric upholstery. So we are going to finish this project up for Yovana so Mom's soon. So gone. Okay, I'm trying to record for the YouTube I channel. Another one. Okay, hang on a second. We're nearly done, but next week we're turning this salvaged bed frame into this beautifully reupholstered masterpiece, which I think is going to blow y'all's minds. So stay tuned for that while we finish Noah's extreme bedroom makeover.